Hello dear students, uh, good evening. Today uh, we are going to have our second session on vector algebra and in this session we are going to start with addition of vectors. So, uh, addition of vectors means what? There are two vectors given and now we are going to add these two vectors. Okay. How we are going to add it? That we are going to learn. So, for that let us consider two vectors A and B. Okay. So, let me first consider the vector A. Suppose this is the vector A. Okay. And we know this is the initial point okay, okay. so let us keep the vector is that you know uh, p q p is the initial point and q is the terminal point and we name this vector as vector a now we consider another vector that i am going to express in the blue color and that vector is something like this and the initial point of this vector is suppose r and the terminal point of this vector is s and we name this vector as vector b now what is our task our task is to add these two vectors vector a and vector b we are going to add and there are two ways we can add the first way in fact i can say there are two methods we can uh, you know leverage for addition of vectors the first method is known as the triangle law of addition and the second method is known as the parallelogram law of vector addition so let us first understand the triangle law of vector addition. So how the triangle law is actually used, let us see. So what we do dear students here, that in the triangle law, the first and foremost thing is that we keep the vector A as it is. That means what I am just going to, uh, you know, uh, write the vector A once more, okay. Suppose this is a vector a. Okay, let me write in the red color as it is as i am drawing in a hand so it may possible that you know the way you see the pq and the way i am writing it here may be slightly different in the length okay but you understood the context so p is the initial point and q is the terminal point and this is the vector a now for vector b what we are going to do dear students is that we are going to shift that vector b parallel to its initial position this is the initial position and parallel to this initial position we are going to shift the vector b in such a manner that the uh, initial point of the vector b i am sorry we are going to shift the vector b in such a manner that the initial point of the vector b is actually coinciding with the terminal point of the vector a okay whatever i just said let me describe it here so this vector b we are moving in parallel in such a manner the initial point of the vector b and the terminal point of the vector A are coinciding. So, the vector B is actually, you know, moved in this manner. You see, this is the initial position of the vector B and this is the final position of the vector B. So, the initial point of the vector B is coinciding with the terminal point of the vector a i repeat once more 
the initial point of the vector b is coinciding with the terminal point of the vector a that means what the point q and r are actually coinciding same point and here as it is this is s and this is the vector b fine now what we are going to do we are going to join the initial that I am going to do in the black color that initial point of the vector A and the terminal point of the vector B we are joining ok and whatever you see in the black color and that vector is known as the vector A plus B that is the addition of the two vectors A and B ok in your physics class in class 11 you have uh, done that what is the magnitude of this vector a plus b is a vector that is a symbolic representation the addition of the two vectors but like uh, any other vectors a plus b is also having a magnitude and direction that magnitude and direction you have studied in your uh, physics classes uh, like uh, motion in a, a plane I am not going to discuss all these things because in the context of the present class it is a vector algebra what is a plus b this is the way it is actually denoted and the method by which we achieve this a plus b is actually a triangle law of vector addition so this is known as triangle law triangle law of vector addition ok anyone is having any doubt please do let me know ok any doubt any smallest doubt never hesitate ok the next one what we are going to discuss the next method that is called the parallelogram law of vector addition what is the parallelogram law of vector addition dear students so let me keep the same vector a as it is and in the red color ok so this is the vector a okay. initial point of the vector a as we know that is the point p and the terminal point of the vector a that is the point q and it is symbolically represented as the vector a now in the parallelogram law of vector addition here also we are going to uh, you know shift the vector b shift the vector b parallel to its initial position in such a manner that both the initial point of the vector a and vector b are actually coinciding that means what whatever i said in the last few seconds if i describe in the you know pic, you know diagram is that so, the initial point of the vector B and the terminal point of the vector A both are actually coinciding. So, that means what? Here P and R will coincide. And this is S as is here. Okay? And we know this is the vector, vector B. Now, what we get? We get PQ is a straight line segment and P S is also a straight line segment and both is actually starting point P. So, we can consider these two are the adjacent sides of a parallelogram. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to complete the parallelogram. So, if we complete the parallelogram that means, uh, you know, uh, we need to draw a line something like this and draw a something like this. So, we complete the parallelogram. Now, the principal diagonal of this parallelogram that means if I draw in the black color so this principal you know you know diagonal of this parallelogram mm -hmm. that represents the vector a plus b that means what dear students so if you see this is actually a plus b ok so for example if we consider uh, this uh, diagonal here is that PQR is suppose it is T then PT is the vector mm -hmm. represented by A plus B and that is known as the 
parallelogram law of vector addition. Parallelogram law of vector addition. Now, if you look into the triangle law of vector addition, there we get the vector a plus b is represented by p s in the black color that is actually this one and in the parallelogram law of vector addition the vector p t is represented by a plus b the vector addition if you see both the black color you know vector notation vector symbolic representation is the state tunnel exactly same but we have achieved into different manner the first one we have achieved by means of triangle of vector addition and the second one we know actually got it as the parallelogram law of vector addition. I hope it is absolutely clear. Any doubt please do let me know. Now dear students what we are going to do we are going to you know perform the difference of two vectors means addition of two vectors we just learned. So, we are going to find, so here we learned a plus b. Now, we are going to learn how to perform a minus b. Actually, to perform a minus b, we need to take the assistance of a plus b only. Means, what I wanted to mean, dear students, is that when we say that a minus b, we are going to achieve a minus b but that a minus b we are going to write is that vector a plus of minus b which means that finding a minus b is just equivalent to addition of two vectors the first vector is a and the second vector is minus b now what is minus b in the last class in the last session we have discussed the uh, you know negative of a vector what happens the magnitude remains the same direction becomes exactly opposite so let us experience experience this thing by means of an example ok suppose this is the vector a ok the same thing we are making it same thing means we are making that is a p as the initial point and q as the terminal point and this is represented by symbolically the vector a correct now what is the vector b as earlier we represented the blue color here also let us represent it in the represented by means of the blue color suppose this is the vector b okay and in the vector b initial point is the represented as r and terminal point is represented as s so this is the vector b now what we are going to achieve we are going to achieve a minus b now if b is this vector what will be minus b if minus b vector is represented as in in blue color a green color so minus b will be something like this it will be something like this minus b so we move the minus b parallel to the b and whatever we have done is that we change the direction. So, this vector whatever you see in the green color that is a vector minus b. Okay. So, let us take uh, you know uh, Q P Q R S. Suppose for minus b initial point is the point represented by T and suppose the terminal point is represented by the point U correct now we have two vectors one vector is vector a and the other vector is minus b now what we going to do a plus b a plus minus b now how to do a plus minus b we can use either triangle law of vector addition or parallelogram law of vector addition let us take you know triangle law of vector addition for that what you need to do here students that the initial point of the vector minus b that is the point t should be coincide with the 
terminal point of the vector a that is point q and the vector minus b will be moved parallel to its initial position so how it will looks like so it looks like something like this okay or maybe i can you can see that uh, tu what you see now so it will be exactly parallel so that means what so this is the you know uh, initial point okay, just a minute let me make it clear that is initial point of the vector minus p will be coinciding with the terminal point of the vector that means t and q should be coinciding so let me draw it as accurate as possible it is a hand drawing okay so this is a point initial point of the vector minus p that means t and q are coinciding and this is the terminal point of the vector b my sorry minus p terminal point of the vector minus p and that is u now what we need to do we need to do a minus b for that what we should do we should join the point p that is the initial point of the vector a and minus b the terminal point of the vector minus b so let us do it in the black color so how it will be so this will be the vector a minus b okay we give a direction here okay so this is the vector a minus b if any doubt at any position uh, never able to let me know about it so so far whatever we have learned dear students we have learned vector addition and we have learned that how to achieve vector addition by means of two methods the first one is the triangle law of vector addition second one is the parallelogram law of vector addition then we learned how to find uh, you know a minus b which is nothing but a plus minus b that means we are achieving the difference of two vectors using the vector addition and that we have learned that how to perform a minus b now dear students we are going to uh, you know look for some properties of vector addition okay so what are the different properties of vector addition let's see okay let me write it properties of vector addition okay the first property what i going to say dear students is that for any two vectors a and b for any two vectors a and b a plus b a plus b is equal to b plus a that means if you add vector b with vector a whatever you are going to get is same as if you add vector a with vector b so that property is known as commutative property okay now you can achieve this thing that uh, you can take two vectors a and b uh, and then you can add uh, a plus b and you can take two vectors uh, b and a and then you can add and then you will find that both the vectors represent the same thing in fact i can show you okay let's take two vectors a and b okay and we know that uh, by uh, you know adding uh, you know uh, two vectors uh, while we are adding two vectors 
we can use either a uh, triangle law of vector addition or parallelogram law of vector addition that means we can shift and for any of this method we need to shift the vector other uh, second vector either to uh, you know the terminal point of the first vector and the <coughs> you know the uh, initial point of the second vector should actually coincide uh, which happens in the triangle law of addition or we can have both the vectors initial point actually coinciding which happens in the parallelogram or vector addition okay so keeping this in mind let us consider both the vectors a and b are having the same initial point okay so what is that so let's take this is the vector a okay so we name this as vector a okay and uh, this is the direction and another vector b so i am writing it here so let me write it in the blue color and this is a vector b and i was telling there as i was telling uh, a few seconds back your students that both the vectors initial point is actually coinciding here so this is the vector b okay now to achieve a plus b what we will do it is simple that we can use the parallelogram law of vector addition for which we need to complete this parallelogram right we complete the parallelogram okay and then the principal diagonal of this parallelogram represented by a plus b so that I am writing in the black color. Okay, so this is what is actually denoted by A plus B. Now let's see what is B plus A. For B plus A, what we are going to do is that uh, you know uh, one thing we are uh, you know clear that as this vector is b let me give a naming convention okay so this is a b c d now the vector bc and vector ad are same by the way earlier i didn't mention the direction of the vector b so this one so we know if we shift a vector parallel to its initial position the vector remains the same i repeat this statement many times because this is a very important statement so why this important statement this important statement help us to conclude the vector bc is nothing but vector b so what we can say this is also vector b okay now what we are doing is that the vector b's initial point is vector a sorry the point b okay that is the initial point and terminal point is the point c now if we consider the b plus a that means what that both the vectors b and a's initial point should be uh, you know uh, you know coincide then what is what is what is mean by that for that that a b has to be shipped so what is mean by that so we will have the vector a something like this again the same thing uh, that we are uh, shifting that vector a with respect to its initial position so now the new position becomes suppose instead of a i am writing it a dash and this is actually this terminal point is b dash okay so this is the vector a so vector a b and vector a dash b dash remain the same now we have the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram one is a dash b dash side and the other side is a dash c so again we can complete this parallelogram okay so if we complete this parallelogram so parallelogram it looks like something like this now what we'll do dear students we will join uh, we will uh, complete the you know the principal diagonal so it will be something like this okay 
So let us take this point as the point E. Okay, this is the point E. Now what we see dear students, so this vector B or A dash E, B or A dash E in this context both are same. This is represented as A, sorry, it is represented as B plus A. Correct. Now, if you look at the previously we got A plus B as the vector A C. Now, we get B plus A as the vector B or A dash E. Both are same because you see uh, a B E or A dash E is nothing but a you know parallel shifting of the vector A C. Correct. So, we can say that you know that a vector addition is commutative. I hope you got a very clear idea that how vector addition is commutative. Second one what we are going to see here students is that that if we have three vectors suppose uh, we have three vectors a, b and c I am going to write it down here and we are going to see that if we add these three vectors then what property we can come up. So, let me use the red color. So, what I wanted to mean dear students, suppose we have three vectors a, b and c. What we are going to do? First, we are going to add a and b that means a plus b and after adding a and b, whatever the vector we uh, get, we are adding that vector with vector c. So, this is the symbolic representation a plus b within bracket and that vector is added with the vector c. Now, we get the different thing. Suppose, we have the vector A and that vector A is actually added with the vector B plus C. We will see that both these vectors that is first A plus B and then added with C and the other vector A in which is added with B plus C both are same and most probably you are aware of it what is this property this property is known as associative property it is known as associative property but how we are going to prove that these two are same ok so for that let us uh, you know take an uh, you know uh, you know symbolic representation and you know, of vector and then let me show you. Suppose we have a vector you know a, b and c. So, how we are going to represent these three vectors? So, let me represent something like this. Suppose this is the vector a okay, and it is represented by p q where p is the initial point q is the terminal point for the vector a. So, this is the vector a then we consider a vector b with initial point as q and terminal point as r ok suppose uh, this is the point r so this is the vector b and then we have a vector c suppose the vector c is something written as that its initial point position is the point R and terminal point is actually suppose S. So, this is the one S and this is the vector C. Now, what we will do that first we will do A plus B. A plus B means what A and B vector are added that is P, Q and Q are added. So, we know uh, by this time we are uh, you know uh, quite uh, confident about how to add a plus b. So, let me uh, do it in the black color. So, this will be the vector a plus b correct. In fact, in the a vector and b vector we see that initial point of the vector b is actually coincide with the terminal point of the vector a which is the point q. So, here we get the vector a plus b. Okay. Now, this vector a plus b is added with the vector c that means 
we are adding two vectors PR and RS. So that means what? The initial point of the vector C that is the point R is coinciding with the terminal point of the vector PR that is vector A plus B. So then what we will do if we need to add these two? Suppose let me describe in the green color the um, addition of A plus B and C. So it will be something like this. Okay. So this vector what we are going to get is that A plus B plus I hope you got a very clear idea whatever I wrote in the green color that is the vector A plus B plus C. Now what we are going to do first we are going to have A and then we will add that vector A with B plus C which is there in the right hand side whatever you see it here. Let us see how we are going to achieve it. So let us have the same configuration of the vectors A, B and C. So that means what dear students so this will be our vector A which is represented by PQ, P be the initial point and Q be the terminal point and this is the vector A. Then we have uh, QR and QR is a vector is something like this where uh, Q is the initial point and R be the terminal point for the vector B and then we have the vector C having its initial point at the point R and terminal point is the point S. Okay, so this is the point S and this one. Now what we are going to do dear students first? First we are going to do B plus C. So what will be the vector B plus C? So let me describe the B plus C in a color called uh, let us say a blue color. So for that the vector B and C has to be added. So before that let me tell this is a vector C. I said earlier but I did not write. Okay. Now to add vector B and C what you should do? We should join the initial position of the vector B that is the point Q with the terminal point of the vector C that is S. So what I mean is that we should join these two points and whatever we get that is actually the vector B plus C. Now what we are going to do dear students, we are going to add two vectors A and B plus C. That means the first vector is A and the second vector is B plus C or I can say the first vector is PQ and the second vector is QS where Q is the terminal point of the vector A as well as the initial point of the vector B plus C. That means this one. If I uh, make a color in the green color this point you see this point Q is the terminal point of the vector A as well as the initial point of the vector B plus C. Now if we need to add these two vectors A and B plus C that is the vector PQ and QS what we should do? We should join the initial point of the vector A and the terminal point of the vector B plus C. That means initial point of the vector A is point P and terminal point of the vector B plus C is the point A. So we should join these two points. So if we join these two points, what it will be? It will be something like this. Okay, and this vector is become A plus B plus Now dear students if you look at the vector PS in the left hand side this one okay 
and the vector ps in the right hand side this one you see both are same the first one is represented as a plus b first that is within the bracket and that is added with the vector c and in the second case what we see that we are adding a with b plus c but both represent the same vector hence we prove the associativity of the vector addition i hope uh, you got a very clear idea that uh, what is meant by the vector uh, you know uh, you know uh, addition the properties okay now the next one what i can say is that is a side as a side discussion is that if we add null vector with any vector we get the same vector that means what you know it is actually known as the you know additive identity so what is additive identity let me explain additive identity what does it mean that if we have any vector a and that vector a is added with a null vector that is zero vector don't write simple zero you should give an arrow on top that will make it the difference between a just a scalar zero that is a value zero and a vector zero that is equal to obviously 0 plus a we know the vector addition is commutative and that will return us the value a and you know here this 0 vector that is a null vector is called the additive identity of the vector addition you know from the relations and functions uh, there is a you know topic called binary operation from there you can say this thing. so what i say is that this zero vector or null vector that is known as the additive identity for the vector addition okay additive identity additive identity for vector addition i hope you got a very clear idea okay now dear students the next point what i am going to discuss is the multiplication of a vector by scalar okay so let's see what is that multiplication of a vector by a scalar So as the topic suggests that we should have a vector and we should have a scalar. So for vector, you know, whatever it is, we considered there is a vector called vector A. Okay. And there is a scalar. So let us consider there is a scalar called lambda. So what is our task? Our task is to see that uh, what will happen. Uh, you know the product of the vector a by the scalar lambda now when we uh, you know consider the product of the vector a by the scalar lambda this is denoted by lambda a okay so lambda a is a vector okay which we call the multiplication of the vector a by the scalar lambda 
it is to be noted that this lambda is also a vector okay in fact we can say it is a vector collinear to the vector a okay the vector lambda a has the direction same as the vector a if lambda is positive or exactly opposite to the vector a if lambda is negative let us see all these things by means of you know um, you know example okay <coughs> but the magnitude of the lambda a okay it is nothing but the mod lambda psi times of the magnitude of the vector so what i wanted to mean as we know that lambda a is a vector so what will be the magnitude of lambda a the magnitude of lambda a will be mod of lambda why mod of lambda because we do not know whether lambda is positive or negative it is a scalar quantity it could be either positive or negative but whatever it is positive or negative for mod lambda we are going to consider only the positive value and that positive value will be multiplied with the magnitude of the vector a and we will get the magnitude of the vector lambda a i repeat once more when we you know multiply the vector a with a scalar quantity lambda we get a vector called lambda a now as lambda a is a vector it is also having a magnitude and what is the magnitude its magnitude is mod lambda times the magnitude of the vector a where mod lambda is the non negative value of the real number lambda that means if lambda is 5 mod lambda is 5 if lambda is minus 5 mod lambda is 5 correct so let's have some geometric visualization of the multiplication of a vector a by scalar okay for that what you can do is that we consider you know the black color suppose this is the vector a suppose this is denoted by the vector a okay now we are going to see if we consider the value of lambda equal to 1 by 2 what will be the va vector represented by 1 by 2a it will be in the same direction of the vector a but it will be shrink its you know uh, dimension will be its length will be shrink by half of the initial vector a. that means as if the vector 1 by 2a will be something like this it is a half of the uh, you know vector uh, you know uh, a so this is half of the vector a now what will be two times of the vector a it will be its length will be double that of the vector a but direction will remain the same so as if it will be something like this so dear students all i am doing is a handwriting so there could be if you exactly measure the length it could be little less or more than the length of the vector a but you understood the symbolic you know representation it is a, just a symbolic meaning the drawing what i am doing is not up to the scale okay so if you see this vector this vector is two times of the vector a direction same now suppose we want to make minus 1 by 2a minus 1 by 2a will be what it is a vector half of the vector a but in the opposite direction that means it will be something like this and this vector is minus 1 by 2 a suppose you want to make minus 2 a simple thing that we will have this vector okay but the direction will be exactly opposite to the vector a and we will get minus 2 a i hope you got a very clear idea that uh, what is uh, mean by the multiplication of a vector is a scalar uh, multiplication of a vector by a scalar so let us consider some special cases like suppose 
lambda equal to minus 1. Dear students, when we consider lambda equal to minus 1, what we get the lambda a? Lambda a becomes minus of a. Correct or not? Lambda a becomes minus a. Which is a vector having magnitude equal to the magnitude of the vector a and direction opposite to that of the direction of the vector a. The vector minus a is called the negative of the vector a. Also, it is known as the additive inverse of the vector a. Why it is called additive inverse of the vector a? If you recall the binary operation from our uh, you know previous chapter relations and functions. So, we know for an element a if we add some other element and because of this addition we get the identity element. So, earlier we saw that null vector or zero vector as the additive identity. Now, for a vector a if we add minus a we get the vector 0 which is the additive identity. So, what does it mean? It means this minus a is known as the additive inverse or negative of the vector a. Okay. So, that means this is known as the additive inverse additive inverse let me write properly additive inverse of the vector a or we can say it is a negative of the vector a okay <coughs> so the next one what we are going to say to your students is that suppose lambda equal to 1 by mod of the vector a so, what I wanted to say dear students, suppose we get the value of lambda equal to, let me use a red color just a minute. So, we consider the value of lambda equal to 1 by mod of the vector. Okay, dear students. Subject to the condition, the vector A is not A null vector or 0 vector because in that case mod a will become a you know real number 0 and 1 by 0 does not make sense or other way we can say is that when you consider lambda equal to 1 by mod of a in that case a is a non null vector a vector which is not a 0 vector is also known as a non null vector. So, now in this particular case when lambda equal to 1 by mod of a what we get dear students we see that mod of lambda a is equal to mod of lambda into mod of a that though we are already aware mod lambda we just see that 1 by mod of a that was our consideration of the as the value of lambda into mod of a and we get this is equal to 1. Okay, dear students. So, lambda a represents a unit vector. What we see is the lambda a is represents as the unit vector because the mod of the lambda a is equal to sorry the magnitude of the lambda is equal to unity. Okay, so, hence it is an unit vector and it is a unit vector in the same direction of the vector a. So, if you recall in the previous session we discussed a unit vector is a vector unit vector of a vector a is having the magnitude 1 and its the direction is the same as the direction of the vector a and that is denoted by a cap if you recall that is a unit vector. So, how we can require a, a represent a cap? A cap is nothing but lambda a and what is the value of lambda we just saw that is actually 1 by mod a. So, that means 
a cap is equal to a vector divided by mod of a vector that is a very important statement here students in many questions so we will see in the later that here the how we can find the unit vector corresponding to a given vector and the way we can find is that that unit vector corresponding to a given vector is that the given vector a divided by magnitude of that vector a okay very important okay so with this note i would like to conclude the class for today in the next class we will discuss the components of a vector and other relevant you know topics with this note let me conclude the class here dear students